Hey everyone, Thor and Smash here, and this is my huge dog, Lagatha. Doggy plays Apex Legends. Doggy eat, le cuisson. Doggy likes to make, the shit after a hit, le cuisson. Doggy. Hey everyone, Thornton Smash here, and today we're going to be talking about the brand new artifact currency that is coming to the game. Not only that, there are five more artifacts coming in, and it's going to be a while before we see some heirlooms again for our main legends that, you know, came from season 12 and on, and we're going to go over the sad fact of that as well. We're also going to go ahead and give out some of these skins for the collection event. All you guys got to do is like, comment, subscribe, as always, and you are entered for a chance to win. But without further ado, let's talk about the state of Apex Legends and its heirlooms going forward. So Apex Legends is moving in a very weird and odd way and actually the more I think about it no it's not odd or weird it's just very electronic arts related anyways most of you might have heard the other day Oswald Tori did say that there is a new type of artifact currency coming out you let us know that they are going to be called exotic shards and they can be found in apex packs coexisting with heirloom shards you can also purchase them directly I can only imagine how expensive this is going to be and they can also be used to redeem apex artifacts in reactive weapon skins now my question here is is he talking about the upcoming r99 ascension battle pass skin which we do know is going to be for season 21 with a list of challenges or are they saying that you can buy straight up old reactive skins like the original flatline in the r99 at which case wow that is the scummiest thing I've ever seen in the history of apex legends there's been whole debates about buying skins that were told that they were exclusive for that battle pass the recolor was a way for them to get around it and if they sell it as an artifact shard holy crap but regardless of that that means that the cobalt heirlooms are not going away. This is also pretty much backed up by what Kral Rendo had said, and Kral Rendo even let us know that this is going to be going on in the future, as they are universal heirlooms, and roughly to get each one in a collection event will be around $290 to $300. The customization feature in the event is not free yet, and won't be active until after the event ends, so we'll have to see how much that goes, but it is speculated to be around $700. Now, this is pretty bad. Hypermist did let us see a couple of the other ones that are coming in the future. You can see the customization screen actually right here, and you can switch the parts from the artifact daggers with other artifact daggers. And each guitar is a set of interchangeable mods, like I just said. And each guitar set is available in their own event, along with a weapon scheme themed after it, which is the R99 right here, which kind of makes me wonder, well, then why are we getting R99 reactives that can be bought with these artifact shards? It just doesn't make a lot of sense. I have no idea why EA is doing stuff like this. It's confusing. And if you thought that this was going to be a one or two season event thing, you're wrong because Hypermiss let us know the code names of the next five artifacts, Celestial, Death, Hasak, Steam, and Stetch. What the what does Stetch even mean? God, I bet it's a really, really ugly one. Regardless, this is absolutely horrendous because it means we're not going to be getting these legends heirloom anytime soon. Mad Maggie mains, Newcastle mains, Vantage, Catalyst, Ballistic, and Conduit main is the newest one and, and Alter as well when they come next season, which we'll talk about in a second, are going to be waiting quite a while to have any developed lore with an heirloom because something that you guys should remember is that heirlooms aren't just a cool cosmetic, which I mean, they are for the most part. They are overpriced, but it was a way to add lore to the character with Wraith Kudai we got a whole heirloom lore story Pathfinder's fight night with the boxing gloves Bloodhound's axe being gifted by his uncle Artur like there's so much cool nuance in the original heirlooms and now we're just getting these things as we see with the cobalt heirloom artifact dagger that just have no relations to the legends yeah you can wield it on any character but it's just completely soulless at least the buster sword i will say was cool because it was related to final fantasy this just makes me question like why apex legend decided to switch to this now, if you're a fan of prestige skins, which I mean, I personally not because it's a first person shooter, but if you are and you get the cool dive trails, those are still coming in. We know that Octane's skin is coming in on April 22nd for the Urban Assault Collection event. And Lifeline is getting a prestige skin in around season 23 when she gets the Lifeline Reborn treatment. So those aren't going away anywhere anytime soon. And heirloom recolors seem to still be a thing as we just got Octane's prototype. And there's still a lot more to do. I think the reason why they're switching to these universal ones is because unfortunately, Apex Legends is just slowing down with Legends. When you look at what they did in 2023, we only got two Legends. Yet we got 14 collection event and themed events, which is, I mean, God, I just, I had to point out the priorities by respawn here. Holy crap. <sighs> But regardless, yeah, so we got two Legends and 14 collection events. So you can only sell so many heirlooms when you're only releasing so many Legends at a time. So this makes sense why they're going to the Universal one. Overall, though, I gotta say, maybe he just can give us a collection event and not expect us to spend our bank on it. Now, we haven't gotten a new Legend so far in 2024, but we are getting our first one that we know is going to be altered that you can see here. Most of you have learned about her abilities from Oz, 
They can remotely interact with a death box to claim one item, cannot be armor. They have a tactical void passage, which creates a portal passageway through a surface, and a void nexus, which creates a regroup point that all allies can remotely interact with to open a face tunnel back to that location. And Alter has a little bit of weird lore, if Oz is correct about his information. Apparently, the background of the character is Asian, Chinese most likely, trained killer since she was a kid, her team of mercenaries betrayed her, turning her rogue, parents got killed, turning her insane, can dimension travel, seeking horizon to force her to help. All that sounds very odd and complex. Convoluted, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie, and also kind of bland at the same time. Like, team of mercenaries betrays her, turning her rogue, and her parents got killed, turning her insane. So, she's basically Batman and Deathstroke. I, I don't know, I'm just not that hyped behind the lore of the character. And the more I think about it, I think respawn's priorities have definitely taken a huge shift. As you can see, there are a lot of bugs in the game right now with the whole breaking of the game this week, but we also know about the respawn layoffs. And they laid off a number of the narrative leads, and it kind of makes me think that the reason that they laid them off was because they knew they weren't gonna be doing regular heirlooms anymore and so they didn't need to develop the story of the characters at least that's my crackpot theory i mean there is still some good stuff apparently according to carl rindo solos is on the way along with a quad players game mode and overall i'm excited about some of the game modes they're coming out with i wish they would fix kind of you know the base core of this game because it does have a lot of issues still like ranked right now is basically unplayable until they fix it and the split is delayed but hey i mean if you want to go ahead and sell the community 300 dollars universal heirlooms which i don't think people are too hyped for be my guest let me know down below what are your thoughts on the new artifact daggers coming in do you think that they are just a cheap soulless cash grab or do you think that they're actually good because they are universal and you can use them on any legend also don't forget to check out this channel right here where i'm covering news on helldivers 2 power world the finals and so many other games i have a ton of fun doing it and your support on there means a ton to me and until next time legends keep slaying the outlands i'll see you out there